Hello and welcome to the first video. Let's get started. So to begin, here's a warm-up question, and this will be very important later. Imagine for a moment that you are a doctor who conducts cancer screenings. Now, imagine the following scenario. 1% of people who come into your office will actually have cancer. 80% of people who have cancer will test positive. That means 20% of people who have cancer won't, right? 7% of people who do not have cancer will also test positive. So that means 93% of people who do not have cancer will test negative. What happens when you screen a patient and the test comes back positive? That is to say, what is the probability that this patient actually has cancer? Think about this for a minute. What was your guess? What was your intuition? This wasn't meant to be a long, laborious calculation, just a just a seat of the pants kind of a guess about what the probability is that the patient has cancer. What if I were to tell you that less than 15% of doctors get this right, a random sample of the doctors in both the US and in Europe? I don't mean exactly right either, I'm talking way off. 85% of them are wildly incorrect. We're not, you know, quibbling over a percentage point here or there. So what's going on here? Before we can really dive deep into this, we need to make sure that we're on the same page with respect to probability basics and notation. So this right here, probability of A equals 0.42. This means that event A, A is some event, the probability of event A happening is 0.42 or 42%. Now we've introduced a bar here and another letter. So these colored letters are going to represent events. The bar means given or conditional on. So this is read the probability of A given B or the probability that event A happens given that event B has happened is 98%. What happens when the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given that B has happened? B tells us nothing about A. It doesn't matter whether or not B happened. The probability of A isn't affected by B. In this case, the events A and B are said to be independent. They do not influence one another when this condition holds. Here's where things start to get important. So we're gonna talk about three main probability topics in this section. Joint probabilities, marginal probabilities, and conditional probabilities. Uh, you may or may not have heard of these. If you have, chances are you've seen a table like this one. So first of all, what this table is showing, we have eye color represented by rows and hair color along the columns. And in the pink box that just popped up, each of those cells represents the probability of having, say, brown hair and blue eyes. So out of the whole population, the probability of having brown hair and blue eyes is 14%. These are called joint probabilities. This is how they're, they're denoted. The probability of E and H. So the probability that eye is some color and the hair is some color. Good so far? Here's an example. What is the probability of having blue eyes and black hair? Got it? Boom, right there blue eyes, and black hair. So these, what do you think these are? We talked about joint probabilities. These are in the margins of our probability table, right? These in the pink box represent the marginal probabilities. When you look at the whole population, but you don't think about eye color, let's say we're only focusing on hair color, and we want to know what percentage of our population has black hair, well, the black-haired people who have blue eyes, the black-haired people who have brown eyes, and there are also black-haired people who have green or hazel eyes. When you add all those up, that's everybody who has black hair, right? So 3%, 12%, and 3% gives us 18% of people in our population who have black hair. So the marginal probability that the hair is black is the sum over all the different eye colors who have black hair. Same thing for brown. So in our population, 48% of people have brown hair adding up the people who have brown hair and blue eyes, brown hair and brown eyes, and brown hair and green or hazel eyes. 
So let me ask you this. What's the probability of someone having blue eyes? In this population, the probability that the eyes are blue is equal to the probability of blue eyes and black hair, probability of blue eyes and brown hair, and probability of blue eyes and blonde hair, and probability of blue eyes and red hair all summed up. So when we sum across this row, boom, 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 boom. These are all the people with blue eyes, 36%. Notice that the marginal probability of one variable is not affected by the other. So in this case, I've blocked out all the information about hair color. It doesn't matter because when we're thinking about the margin of eye color, we have summed across hair color. So all that matters is this right here in the margins. We don't know anything about hair color. 